Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm your host, Mark Spencer, and I'm here today with Steve Taylor. How you doing, Steve? I'm doing great. Thanks Good for having see me. It's nice to have somebody taller than me <laughs> yeah. on the show here. Hey, so Steve is a motion graphic artist in the LA area, focusing a lot on After Effects, mm -hmm. right? Been doing mm -hmm. some tutorials with us about After Effects. And since I do a bunch of stuff with motion, we thought we'd do something a little different here and have kind of a, a share and compare. We're gonna look at a technique and how you would do it in either After Effects or motion. Yeah. So, um, so take it away, what do you have got going for us in the After Effects side of things? Well, today we're talking about uh, null objects and specifically how to control a camera with a null object. Um, normally, uh, I don't know about motion, and you can tell us about that in a second, but uh, in After Effects, uh, a default camera is what's called a two-node camera, meaning there's a camera and a point of interest. And if you uh, move the camera around, it's always going to be pointed at the point of interest. So you separately control that point of interest. Yes. And the camera, if it, if it rotates or moves or whatever, it'll always look at that. Yeah, okay. if, uh, there's no rotation controls because it's married uh, to that point okay. of interest. So you can't rotate the camera because it's just always going to look at that thing. It's locked on that thing. Got it. If you want to rotate the camera, you have to actually move the point of interest. It gets a little complicated, especially for new users. Um, you can turn off what's called auto-orient and gets rid of the uh, point, point of interest so that the camera is just a one-node camera. And then you have separate controls for rotation and position. Okay, and then it would turn like a camera on a tripod, exactly. like right in the body like this. Yeah, the okay. node would be inside the middle of the camera and Got everything it. would be from there. Got it. Um, many times when I'm doing opens or uh, title sequences, um, I want the camera to fly around, have a little bit of movement, and uh, easily be able to control that thing. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually create a null object and marry and parent that camera to the null object so that I can move it around and get all kinds of independent controls of the camera and its position and rotation. Great, let's see how it works. Yeah, so what I've got here is a scene where I've got two images. Uh, the left image is back farther in uh, Z space than the front image, and I have a camera. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a null object. And that null object is basically in the very center of the, uh, of the composition at zero um, Z space position. Okay. And our camera is actually forward from that. I'm going to parent that camera to the null. And what that does is they, uh, if I change the view to a custom view, you'll actually see that the camera is pointing at the null object. Okay, so this, and this looks, from the motion perspective, this looks very familiar, because we've got a camera, we've changed this, we call this a perspective view, we can see the camera, and the null objects, as for people who aren't familiar with them, it's it's like a, a position in space, but that's it, right? It's an it has invisible, no content. yeah, it's an invisible object. Okay. I'm actually gonna um, activate it in 3D space, so now you see it kind of in 3D space. So the camera is pointing at and locked to the null object. Okay. If I rotate the null object, you'll see the camera rotate in that space. Right, the camera rotates, but it's kind of anchor point of rotation is the null object. Yeah, it's like orbiting around that point. Okay. In fact, that's one of the great tools uh, to use this effect for, is to orbit around something. You can actually ah. just set the rotation to a full one uh, one rotation, or 360 degrees, and you'll get a and full a rotation all the way right around. around. And you can loop that as much okay. as you want. Um, so that's how After Effects would handle a camera um, parented to a null. Tell me a little bit about how motion might do that. Sure, so you can do similar things, yeah. but there's a little bit different terminology and, and a little bit different tools. So I've got, by amazing coincidence, the exact same <laughs> setup that you do with these two photos, uh, which I believe you took I in, did. in Rome. Huh? Yeah, Very and they're beautiful. on iStockphoto.com. There you go. <laughs> and um, these photos, I have one pushed back in Z space here, this one on the left, and I have a camera in the scene. And in motion, there are no null objects. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no sort of general purpose tool like that, which I know you can use them for a lot of different mm -hmm. things. But one thing that works with, uh, with motion, if I go up, I'm just gonna go to a top view here, and we can see our camera. Also press Shift C to fit everything into the window. You see our camera has a focal plane, like mm -hmm. the camera in After Effects. But the unusual thing about motion, by default, the camera, if we look in the heads up display, is a framing camera. And what that means is if I rotate the camera, it mm -hmm. actually rotates around its focal plane, which is kind of like oh, yeah. the point, point of, of interest, interest, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So you can apply either keyframes or a sweep behavior to have the camera rotate, and you can see in the little inset view in the bottom right corner here uh, that you can rotate right around an object in a similar kind of fashion. So a uh, little bit different terminology, but by default, that's what the motion camera does. If you if you wanted it to do like. Um, the After Effects camera with no no object, you could change it to what's called a viewpoint camera right up in here in the heads up display, and you can see that this little set of controls goes to the mm. body of the camera. 
And now the, the camera turns like uh, a camera that wouldn't have a null object attached to it. Nice. So it's a similar kind of thing. It's just implemented a little bit differently uh, in motion. If you, uh, in motion, if you move this uh, framing point, does, if you actually move it, does the camera stay in relation to the framing point relative? This, this framing point in motion, that determines the camera itself. So that really is what you use to move the camera. So it's so not it's really not, a point of interest. It's not a no, target, per se. No, it's not a target, That's per nice. se, that moves the whole camera. Yeah. You're moving the camera from the focal point. So uh, what I have to do is basically build a null object to even get that kind of effect in After Effects. So it's, it's a little bit of an extra step, but then you have a great deal of flexibility once yeah. you've done that, right? Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, many times what I'll do is uh, you can actually copy the position. I'll hit the P key to call it the position keyframe here. I can actually set a keyframe for the null object here, and then maybe five seconds later approximately, I'll actually go to my other image and copy the position keyframe or position, and that'll create a new keyframe for my camera. And if you'll notice, it's actually moving from one image to other. If I go to the camera view, you will see it literally moving from one image from to one another. To next. So it's great when you have like a whole ton of images for a montage, and you can just set keyframes, and they're the actual positions of the images. So you copied the position of the further away picture and yeah. pasted that onto the null, so that the null moved back to that and brought the camera with it? Yeah, exactly. Okay. This first position, what I can do is I can copy the position of the first image to the null, and that centers it so that the position of the null is exactly the exactly same as the same. image. Okay. And then I did the same for the second keyframe for the next image. So it literally just goes from one so image to another. Paste and it goes right from one to the next. And if you have depth of field enabled, basically you're going to get a beautiful uh, depth of field effect that okay. follows. So it's like a target. Right. Yeah. Okay. And the way the motion is kind of similar, it probably takes about the same number of steps. In motion, if I go back to the active camera view, I'll just use the camera menu here. If I wanted to move, to this second object here in motion, there's a command for that. If I select the photo on the left here in the camera menu, there's something called uh, frame object. Nice. And that will move the camera to directly frame that Beautiful. object and have the, the bounding box of that object text, touch the edge of the canvas. That's nice. And if I had recording turned on, that would set a keyframe for that motion. It didn't there, but if I, if I move forward in time and turn on recording mm -hmm. and hit command F and then play back, I've got a, a similar kind of thing. That's beautiful. So it's like about the same amount of work in each yeah, application, but seemingly. just a different approach to, yeah, to yeah. doing it. Which is true of a lot of the things right. in After Effects. Great. So um, if you're interested in learning more about After Effects, it's, to me, um, whether it's Final Cut Studio or Adobe Production Premium, having these tools means more creative possibilities, yeah, just yeah, yeah, access yeah. to all the tools. So if you want to learn more about After Effects and you're just getting into After Effects for motion or just motion graphics in general, you have a training on Ripple well, Training. Well, uh, RippleTrain.com has uh, just put out a new disc. Uh, this is the, the After Effects Fast Forward, and it's a, a great tool for beginners or people that are just buying After Effects okay. or are kind of a little scared to get into it. It's uh, just learn about 20% of the features that will give you tons of creative possibilities. And in fact, um, Ripple Training is offering a special with the Mac break uh, code word. You can get 15% off, and I hear that you have a product as well. Sure. So I have the Motion Fast Forward, which is kind of modeled on the same thing as the Introduction to Motion. And I have a new product out, uh, Mastering Motion's Camera, mm. which uh, gives you uh, sort of more details on going deep into working with Motion's Camera. And the same 15% applies with the code Mac break for either one or both of yeah. these. And then uh, I do discuss, if you just want a little bit more training for free, I do discuss working with motion and using something as kind of the null object equivalent in motion. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you go to look at uh, the Mac break episodes on your iTunes feed or on uh, pixelcore.tv slash Mac break studio, uh, episode number 68 talks about using a sort of a null object in motion. It's a mm -hmm. little bit of a hack, but it allows you some flexibility that you don't automatically get like you do with After Effects. Great. Steve, thanks for having me. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.